In this lesson, I want to look at how to assign alternate material variants onto our Mac. So this is a brand new scene file, but there are some things that are already in here that we've looked at previously in other lessons. We have our Mac in its rest pose imported here into SOPs. And then in the stage, I'm doing a SOP import here. You can see that we are referencing our rest pose and we're bringing it into Mac slash geo. So all the parts will be down here. And we have a material library set. You'll notice the material library has three different materials in here. We've got our primary material, and then we've got two variants in here. If you dive inside, you can see how that's set up. Now, what I want to do is reference this into here. I can put it under here, in which case I'd want to change the material path prefix, or I can reference it directly in. So I'm going to reference like this. And I'm going to go to my multi input and primitive path. I would like that to go into Mac. Slash MTL. So we've got Mac material and geo. All right. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is we might want to write this material library out to its own USD file, as opposed to the mesh coming out to its own USD file, or rather as opposed to them being embedded into one USD file together. It's up to us how we want to do this, but this allows us some freedom to continue to author materials without having to embed everything into the mesh file if we want it to that way. To set this up correctly, we need to choose where these are going to save to. So for here, we're going to choose a layer save path and we will use dollar hip slash, I will say USD assets mech. And we will call this mech geo dot USD. A. Okay, so that will save there. We'll need to set a layer save path for this as well, so that when we do write this to disk, it has a place to save. So to do that, we need to configure the layer. So we do configure layer here, put this right down here, and we can define the save path here. So I'll just copy that. And actually this one, I probably want to make that C, which is the uh, compressed or, well, it's a crate, I believe is what it's referred to as, but this is the, uh, the binary version of that file. So we've got the USDC. This one can be USDA because that's really just text readable file and that should be fine. And now we want to assign our different variants in here. So instead of assigning the material right here, we're going to do this variant block. And we can choose to add variants to an existing primitive. So now we get this variant block here. We're going to bring in our uh, original right here. And then we are going to branch this into the variant block begin. And now in here, we're going to assign the materials. So each one of these pipes that are coming in is going to be a variant and we'll use nulls to label them. So we'll call that red. This one will be called dirty green. And this one we'll call side effects orange. And we'll wire all of those in. Now we haven't done anything yet here, uh, but we will start to plug some stuff in right before the nulls. Now in here, we can choose the variant names. So I'm going to call that red, 
call that dirty green. And again, we'll just call it the same thing, side effects orange. Okay, now we can assign the materials. So we'll assign the materials and then we'll do actually a couple other things in here, but first let's just get the materials assigned. So assign the material here and we want to assign it. We can do it straight onto the geo or we can do it onto all the individual meshes. I'll just do it onto the meshes and we will do our mech material. And let me click here just to make sure that's working. So there's our red material. We'll go to dirty green. Now I'm wiring variant block into dirty green. We need to change this. There's our green material. And then this one will be our orange material here. Now we see that we've got orange. Okay, so on our variant here, we need to tell it where we would like to store this variant information. So right now we see that it's storing it on something called a variant block end, which would be down here, but I actually want to store this information onto our mech. So what I'm going to do is drag our mech into here. And now the variant information is actually stored here. Now you'll notice it switched to the orange variant and that's because it chooses whatever is last in this list to set as its default. If we don't like that, we can change that. Uh, what we can do is use a set variant here. It's going to ask which primitive do we want to get the variant information from or for, and it's going to be here. You can see that right here is where it is. Drag and drop. And let me also go back to our variant set. So our variant set was set to model, and you can see that there's a namespace here which says it's a model variant. But we can change this to anything we want. So if I go to my name, you see it just has the name my name. We're going to change that to MTL to know that it's a material variant and not a geometry variant here. So now our variant set is going to be our material set and the variant name that we're going to choose is going to be red. And that is our set variant. That's our default variant. Of course, you can change this to whatever it is that you like in here. toggle back and forth here. Sometimes there's some GL updating issues here. Okay, so with all of this set, now we just need to write this out to a USD file. So for that, we want a USD ROP. We're going to put that down here. And I'm going to copy that. And we will output this here. We're going to call this mech asset. And that will be just USD in there. Okay, we will save this file to disk. The file is saved to disk. When I open this up, what we'll see are three different USD files. We have the material file here. We've got the USD file with all the geometry. You can see the file difference. And then we have the asset here. And the asset you can see is really small. So the material set, 21 kilobytes, super small, geo, quite large. And the actual USD file that says how to reference these two in and bring them together is right here. So this is what we want if we're going to import that. Let's take a look at what that looks like now. We're going to use a reference. I'm going to highlight this and we will scroll to the file pattern here and we will grab our Mac asset. 
Now, when that comes in, you can see that it has the name mech asset there. It's going directly here into the hierarchy. The reason it's called mech asset is because that was the name of the USD file. Uh, in here, there is an option to say where that what that is, and you can see it's grabbing the source name here, but we can change that to anything we want. So now it's called mech. Change that again, source name. But you can see that everything that we put in there is still there. I'm just going to do this as mech just to be consistent for where we were before. So that has everything we need. It's got the materials, it's got our geo, and it has our variant sets in here. So if we want to change the variant, again, we just use a set variant. And again, we'll say the mech is what we're interested in and our variant set is going to be our material. And here, let's change this to dirty green. And you'll see that we have correctly set that variant. The variants are all built in here. If this doesn't make a lot of sense, it can be worth looking at how things are written to disk and sometimes just bringing them in with a reference so that it's understandable about what's there. We can do something like this. We can bring our reference in and this time I'm going to grab just our mech geo. And you can see that all that's here is the geo. And that's because when we press this button down here, what it does is it executes little ROPs that are inside of, well, I don't know if there's a ROP actually in here or if there's something about the script in the USD ROP that actually reads these paths and then bakes the layers as necessary. I think it's something more akin to that. But because we had set this layer save path here, what it says is whatever's inside here is going to be baked into this file. So you can see that that is the contents of that file. And we'll take a look at the material file here. So the material file only has our materials in here, which is why it's very lightweight. And then the asset file is really telling us how to merge these together and then set the variants.